Welcome to part 5 of ECRAS tutorial. Today we are going to start a new project in two-dimensional. We are going to insert the digital terrain model, the orthophoto. We are going to define the perimeter and the break lines. And we are going to split the perimeter and the break lines in cells. Let's put the end on the software. You open ECRAS and you create a new file in the directory that you have previously organized. File, new project, ECRAS, and I call it tutorial. Pinadatigra. Fine. The interface will ask you if you want to use the European unit system or not. I say yes. Now you can open RAS Mapper and you can add the terrain data. You click on terrain, right click, create a new RAS terrain. The interface will ask you to give the projection. This is very important if you want to have your terrain properly projected on your area. Click yes. You need to find the projection file like we have seen in ECRAS one dimensional. I have it here under shape file. This is my projection file UTM32 North. You can verify that you have introduced the right projection. Here it is UTM zone 32 North. At this point you need to insert your digital terrain model. It is this one. This is the digital terrain model created previously with the drone. Click on create and the terrain model will be imported. If everything is fine, you shouldn't have any error message. Terrain complete, you close it and here you can see the terrain. Now we need to be sure that our terrain is properly projected. Therefore, we download the imagery of uh, Google Earth or map S3. I go on map layer. I right click on it, add web imagery. I know that ArcGIS World Imagery has a high quality imagery and relatively recent. I click on OK. I can see that it is properly georeferenced, but I don't want to work with Google Earth imagery or map S3. I want to use my imagery done with the drone because this is a higher resolution and it is more recent and it match more with the digital terrain model. I click on map layer, right click map data, add an existing layer and I look for my imagery. As you remember, I have to convert it in BMP in order to be accepted by the software. This is the image. Let's see. Yes, here we have. Now we have the orthophoto and the digital terrain model. Fine. We can start to save our project. Now we have to define our perimetry. We go on geometry, we right click on it, add new geometry. We can give a name, I can give Pina Diagram. And all these sub layer are automatically created. I click on 2D flow area. At this point, you can define your perimeter. You click on perimeter, click on editing take these features and start to digitize the area of interest. This must be the area that include the area of potential flooding. Of course, you need to know the area. Well, in order to be able to define it. Click twice, give the name this point, the interface will ask you to define the point spacing. This depends a lot of the size of your area of interest. Since my area is relatively small, 
I can define a relative small space for example 1 meter or 2 meters I will define 2 meter by 2 meters smaller is your spacing more time the simulation will take to run so I define 2 meters of cells you can give a default mannings I give 0 0.035 and I can click on generate computation points without break lines this is important since at this point I didn't insert the break lines so the mesh is created you can see the number of cells created 85,000 cells and you can click on close now we can define the break lines the break lines are actually the river you can go on break lines right click draw the river manually if you want or i can take it from hms or from the previous exercise as a shape file i right click on it import feature from shape file select the area where i have my river and somewhere I should have my river. Here it is. I import. This is the river exactly like we have done it in HXMS and HRAS one dimension. We can stop editing. Yes. At this point, we have to right click on break lines, open attribute table and define the near spacing and far spacing this process will align the cell along the river and the number that you are going to introduce here is going to be the size of the cells along the river if you don't specify anything for far spacing the default will be the spacing that you have defined before so two meters and for the near spacing it will be the double of the number that you have defined so four meters okay at this point i click on editing again right click on perimeter and i can generate computation points with the break lines that have been imported or generated i click ok here i take some time and now we can see that along the river line cells have been created parallel to the rivers bigger cell far and smaller cell close to the river you might have some mistakes if you have mistakes you can see red points around there in, the, in this case i don't have any mistake to correct the mistakes just add computational points close to the mistakes and the problem is going to be solved. I can save. Now it's time to develop a land cover map. This is it for now. Next part we are going to insert the land cover and the Manning's coefficient.